Hey guys, David Lamont here, full send hunting. So today, we are going to cut back straps and tender lines. And then we'll start on the hamburger tomorrow. So you got my knives, knife sharpening kit. Um, prefer to use a bony fillet knife. These knives by Outdoor Edge are phenomenal. I've had this knife for probably 10 years or better. Works great. Cutting board, meat, cold, uh, freshly out of the fridge for the last three days. Also, if you freeze it just to a point where it's stiff but not frozen, makes it a little easier to cut and handle. I use this for all the extra pieces I cut off of it to go into burger. And then of course, you have your trash can. So, and then we'll step over here. And I prefer to um, vacuum seal it when it comes to my steaks. So pretty much it, and we'll get started. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to do this the best I can. Um, I prefer cutting gloves, but this is, I can't find my cutting gloves, so this is gonna have to work for today. I'll try to do this as clear as possible. Um, this is a tenderloin. This comes from underneath the animal, up next to the ribs. Um, I always use a towel you can get it damp a little bit and that'll help get any excess hair off of the animal off of the meat itself okay and basically I'm just gonna clean this steak up real quick and uh, give a nice little rinse and make uh, make one steak out of it so with tenderloins are kind of a um, I don't know, I wouldn't say they really feed more than more than one meal. I mean you could probably cut it up for two. But and then I also it's one of the finest cuts of the meat or of the animal, so we prefer to keep it intact and uh cleaned up real nice. The nice thing is is they're relatively easy to clean. So obviously you sharpen your knife. I'm gonna take some of this excess fat and I'm just gonna just gonna trim away just like you did when you when you got the animal down. Okay, just like that. Now typically so this is strictly fat, like you're not gonna be able to do anything with that. Deer fat's really chalky. Um so it doesn't really I mean you can use it for rendering, but I don't really use it for fat, I'd rather use bear grease. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Inside there's what we call that right there. It's called silver skin. Okay. Now that can be kind of tough to chew through. And if you're putting it through a grinder, you definitely want to get rid of that. So the best way to get rid of that is just kind of get under it like, like fish skin. Just kind of clean it out of there like that. Now this is all just trash, so I'm not going to put any of this in the uh, the hamburger bucket. Okay, and then I get some of this bloodshot off of there, just like that. Tell you what, man, these Grim Reapers did some damage. So there's a little piece of meat attached right here on the end. I'm going to cut that off and I will use that for hamburger. Okay. So just follow right down. You'll find when you're doing wild game or any animal really, uh, you can actually follow along the muscle groups relatively easy. Okay. Like I said, if you froze this just a little bit, some of this stuff will come off a lot easier. And then once you've let your meat sit, it'll kind of get a, a discoloration. 
um, to the meat, kind of a brownish color. You can kind of see it right there on the end. I prefer to get rid of that and use that for hamburger. Just because hamburger grinds up really easy. So we'll just, just like that. Remember, the sharper your knives are, the better this will this will go for you. And we'll take that little piece of fat off right there. That's I mean that's pretty much it. And you could you could clean it up a little more. You can get all these little chunks of fat off. It really just depends on how healthy you want your meat. That is perfectly usable for hamburger. So we'll put that in there. I'll set the steak right here for a minute. I'll clean up this fat off of there. And then I just cut it into about one inch cubes, one inch by one inch cubes, just like that. Throw that in our hamburger bucket. And at the end, when we go through all the shoulders and everything else, we'll add all this from all this other steak, all the leftover parts, and we'll make, uh, that'll give us a little more hamburger meat. So we'll just, like I said, this silver skin and this fat doesn't go through the grinder real well. So the more you can clean that up, the better it'll be. Um, you know, something like that, that's pretty thin. That'll be just fine going through the grinder. Um, you'll see on some of the other cuts of meat that it gets significantly tougher. And as long as you're keeping your meat cold, you really won't have any issues. Um, putting it through the grinder. I'll just take off that little chunk right there. So I mean that's you know a lot of people just toss that. And that's you know that's a lot of good hamburger right there. So it adds up. I mean by the time it's all said and done, you'll fill this bucket up twice with excess meat that people just toss. And you know, hamburger's good for tacos, it's good for um spaghettis. You know, you could you could cut these up really small if you wanted to and turn them into a um, like stew meats. Like if you want to do a beef stew like that, I just toss that. It's all fat. That's essentially it right there. So we'll give that a little rinse and uh, stick in a vacuum sealer, mark it, and uh, that's it. It's tenderloin. It's one steak right there, guys. Do two of them and you're done deal.